Your basic one class utilized the sewing advisor for the fastest, most accurate stitch selection in garment construction. Now many of these stitches have practical applications to speed the actual sewing process. Utilize these techniques as you sew your next projects. The first technique we'll do is stitch in the ditch. And the term stitch in the ditch refers to a row of stitching laying right in a seam line. I actually have a little example to show you. It is almost invisible from the right side. You'll see a waistband that we've applied and then instead of hand stitching it, we've stitched right in the ditch where the waistband was applied to the skirt and from the wrong side, you can see there actually is a row of stitching there holding that waistband in place. Stitch in the ditch is also used on bindings and to tack facings into seam lines. And this technique actually replaces time-consuming slip stitching in many instances. Select a stretch medium fabric now and cut it in two. Enter stretch medium on your sewing advisor and touch stitch A2 on your A cassette. Consult the info display. The A foot is recommended and presser foot pressure 2 is suggested. We will now sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance which is between the 1 and 2 guide sewing a seam stitching the two pieces of sweatshirt fleece right sides together as if one is a binding or a waistband. Now fold one piece of fabric to the wrong side over the seam allowance to form a binding or waistband effect. Snap on the C foot. This C buttonhole foot will actually be used as a guide foot for this technique. S touch stitch A1 on your cassette and stitch in the ditch from the right side with the long toe of the foot riding along the seam line to guide you. A1 is actually a straight stitch with the needle to the left. This is called left needle position. The edge joining foot, an accessory available from your dealer, is a perfect guide for this technique. Great, can't even see it. Well, your Viking Husqvarna has 25 needle positions for the most accurate seaming and top stitching ever possible. Stitch A1, as we've mentioned, is a straight stitch in left needle position. Stitch A2 is straight stitch in center needle position. And stitch A3 is right needle position. Now the additional needle positions are set by touching the whip button while in A1, 2, or 3. Let's try all 25 positions now. Touch A1 and then touch minus on the width. This gives you 12 needle positions. Wow. Okay, touch A3 and then minus the width button for 12 needle positions to the right. Machine quilters who desire a perfect quarter inch seam allowance using the edge of the A foot as a guide will touch A3 width 3. Okay, another technique we'd like to share is speed gathering over threads. Have you ever had threads break when you're drawing them up and trying to gather? For example, on the waistband of a skirt before you put it on and you try to adjust your gathers, maybe you've run two rows and then pulled them up. Well, let's all right now select a woven lightweight fabric and enter woven light on the sewing advisor. Touch A12 for a zigzag stitch. This is your standard zigzag and plus the width to four. Use your standard presser foot A and pull 12 inches of top and bobbin thread out toward you. Then place your fabric under the foot and lower the presser foot and sew stitching right over those threads that you've pulled out. Now, be careful not to catch those threads because you're going to be drawing them up later.
But I will say, to make this technique easier, easier you may want to snap on the narrow braiding foot, available as an accessory. It has a little hook in the top to prevent any chance of threads being caught. Now pull up those threads. You can actually adjust and get your gathering just perfect. The gathering foot for light to medium fabrics and the ruffler for pleating almost any weight, both accessory feet will speed this technique and are available from your Viking dealer. Well, we're going to talk about mending. And I know that most sewers would rather start a new garment from scratch than to mend. <laughs> but a number of new mending programs on your Viking Husqvarna will make mending and other clothing repairs easier and much faster. Stressed seams are often the first ones to split with wear. You can mend them with the reinforced straight stitch so they'll never split again. Select a medium weight woven fabric now and enter woven medium on your sewing advisor. Touch A9. Now A8 or 10 are the reinforced straight stitch in left and right needle positions. Fold this fabric diagonally and you will stitch now on the bias of the fabric. The seams of garments which are cut on the bias, like crotch seams, are the most likely to split and to tear as you wear them because of the stretch in the bias of the fabric. But this will be a strong mend for those seams. And for impressive top stitching, you can increase the stitch length to 4.5 and stitch this same reinforced straight stitch. Neat, okay. What about darning? Well, darning over a small hole before it becomes a big hole can save many a garment. We're going to always darn with the finest weight of thread in the closest color match possible. But for now, select a medium woven fabric and enter woven medium on your sewing advisor. Touch A38 for darning. Cut a tiny quarter inch hole or so in your fabric and then begin sewing at one side, the left side, and above the hole. Sew down across the hole, and when you reach the bottom edge, touch the reverse button and keep sewing. Your Viking will sew backward and forward across the hole 12 times, completely darning a small hole closed. For larger holes, repeat the process until the entire hole is filled. For some darning, you may want to repeat this process in the opposite direction. And of course, if we'd had a nice thread match there, we'd have had a nice matched spot mended. Now, several of the stitches on your Viking will efficiently apply patches and mend tears. Apply patches to the right side of your garment, then trim out the bulk from the back side. We'll use a heavy woven fabric, like a denim for this sample, and enter woven heavy on the sewing advisor. Touch A39 and cut a slit from the edge of the fabric to the center. Then fold the fabric in half to simulate a stabilizing fabric behind your tear. Stitch over this slit to mend it. Now in reality, on a garment, you may wish to stitch over the tear several times. And in that case, you could touch reverse to sew back and forth. But the neat thing about these mending stitches is that they actually will simulate the weave of the fabric. And again, I mentioned that we, of course, would match our thread color we're using high contrast here so that you can see the stitching. Well, we have a strong continuous mending stitch, A40. Touch A40 now. This actually combines the sideward mending of A39 with the darning of A38. Use this same woven heavy and cut a one inch slit into the fabric and stitch down over the slit. Now it's going to seem like what you just did, but when you reach the bottom of the slit, touch reverse 
and your Viking will automatically darn back over this slit, darning over that stitching. And once it's stitched back over it, it's going to stop automatically. When you have larger holes and tears to mend, you will want to repeat these techniques several times. And although no one likes to mend, I think you'll find it faster and easier than ever before with your Viking Husqvarna. Simply select the best stitch for the type of mending you need and sew. Later in the tape, we will be using the pre-programmed four-way mending found on Cassette L. Great, okay. Bar tacks are programmed on your Viking. It's the A37 stitch, and we'll use the same technique fabric and touch A37. You may want to sew several bar tack samples. Simply start sewing, and your Viking will stitch a bar tack perfectly. Use this to secure elastic ends, drapery pleats, belt loops, pocket corners, all those things just like ready-made. Super! Now we'll talk about elastic application. With elastic application, it's important to use a stitch that will stretch with the elastic. And for best results, when sewing elastics, use a 90 stretch needle. We'll use a Trico fabric and select a stretch light fabric now and some lingerie elastic. And I'll show you a little sample that I've done that sort of simulates this technique. In essence, I've put some elastic around the top edge of my slip, okay, in making a little slip here. And I'll point out that we're going to be sewing the elastic on down from the edge and then trimming away, which is much, much easier <laughs> than trying to sew this right along the edge. So enter stretch light into the sewing advisor, touch stitch A19, the three-step zigzag, or you could use A20, the serpentine stitch. Lay the elastic on top of the trico, okay, and stitch about a half inch from the edge of the trico with the pico edge of the elastic along the raw edge of the trico, okay? Take a few stitches into the lower edge of the elastic and stitch the elastic to the trico, stretching the elastic as you sew. Use this technique for slips, panties, children's wear, mending, and for swimwear. Because elastics have rubber as a part of their construction, it's important to apply them with a stitch that will stitch into the elastic without cutting it. The next step, of course, from the wrong side is to trim away the excess trico up to the elastic. Okay, what about casings? Stitch A28 actually forms a casing as you sew over elastic. We'll use a woven light fabric and enter woven light on your sewing advisor. Then touch stitch A28. Snap on presser foot B or the transparent foot B for better vision. Slide your elastic into the slot on the foot from the top, then under the foot to the back and place the fabric under the foot and sew. The stitch will form over the elastic, but won't catch into it. There's a little tunnel under the B foot that's guiding the elastic for you. Many patterns call for a bias tape casing for elastic at the waistline or at the wrist. This will save you time and lots of effort on these types of applications. Now, hold both ends, but when you finish sewing, pull up the elastic to the desired fullness. I'm sure you see why we have to hold both ends, or we'd pull the elastic right out. Won't this save you time? Great. The shell edge is a great finish, and I have it on the bottom of the little slip I shared with you a minute ago. It's a great finish for most lightweight wovens, and you'll see it a lot on ready-made garments such as slips and other lingerie. To finish the edges of most lightweight knits or wovens with the shell edge, as I've done on the slip that I'm sharing with you here, select a stretch light trico fabric, 
and enter stretch light on your sewing advisor. Touch stitch A30 and touch the side to side mirror image. This is the first time we've used that. We'll be using presser foot B, the transparent one, and we'll fold up a one inch hem along one edge of the fabric. For best results, sew along the stretchy edge. Now line up the fold edge of the fabric with the center red line on the foot. Stitch along the edge with the zigzag just jumping off the edge of the fabric. That's what forms the shell. For a finished double turned shell edge, snap on the accessory narrow hem foot available as an accessory from your dealer. This technique is most often seen on ready-made lingerie, but is pretty for baby layette items, children's wear, and home deck as well. You would then trim away the excess hem up to the shell edge from the wrong side. On fabrics that don't shell easily, you may want to increase the upper tension. Great. Okay, ribbing. Now ribbing is something that we use a lot on knits, but you'll see ribbing quite a lot on wovens as well. And I've got an inside out sweatshirt here to share with you to show you just how that ribbing works. It's a quick professional way to finish many garments today. And your sewing advisor will select the best stitches for sewing ribbon, ribbing to t-shirts and sweatshirts and also to woven shirts. For your sample today, Use a stretch medium sweatshirt fabric and enter stretch medium into the sewing advisor. Now touch seam overcast. Consult the info display and the B presser foot is recommended with a pressure setting of two. Cut a mock neckline into your fabric. Then fold the ribbing in half lengthwise and lay the ribbing on top of your mock neckline matching the raw edges. Ribbing is usually stretched as it's sewn so that it lays snugly against your body or your wrist. Stitch the ribbing now to the neckline, stretching it as you sew. A basic rule is to cut stretch ribbing two-thirds the length of the opening you're applying it to. You may want to experiment with other seam overcast stitches. A22 is especially suitable for the application of ribbing. And if you should ever need to rip out a seam overcast stitch, simply slip your seam ripper right down under the diagonal stitches. Now I hear that little beep beep. That's telling us that we're running out of bobbin thread, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we can change easily. Look at that wonderful ribbing application. Great. Well, let's slip in a new bobbin, and of course, that's one of the wonderful features of your Viking Husqvarna, the fact that when you're almost out of bobbin thread, you'll hear beep, 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 and the little bobbin will flash at you, and you can stop and put in a new bobbin without ever interrupting your sewing. Next, we'll talk about rickrack stitch. And the rickrack stitch is a strong top stitch, actually looks like rickrack, with a buildup and with stretch. Use a piece of vinyl, enter vinyl into your sewing advisor, and touch the rickrack stitch A18. Consult the info display. It says to use presser foot H. This is the Teflon presser foot and will smi slide smoothly over this vinyl. Now lap one edge of the vinyl over the other and stitch along the raw edge. The swing of your needle should jump just off the overlapped edge to finish it. We would use the rickrack stitch for lapped seams like this to eliminate bulk in heavy fabrics, but it's also great to apply trims, as in blanket binding, very, very strong, and as a decorative top stitch, which actually looks like purchased rickrack. The flat lock stitch A25 is also suitable for use as lapped seaming. The bridging stitch is used when you butt two pieces of fabric or lace together to eliminate bulk. For inserting lace and sewing over elastics, select an a, wo a woven fabric and cut it in two. 
Enter woven medium on your sewing advisor and touch A27, the bridging stitch. Consult the info display. You may use the A or the B foot for this technique. Presser foot pressure six. And then fold back one edge of each piece of fabric about a half inch so that you have a finished fold. Butt those folded edges together and center them under the foot. Now stitch them together which, with the bridging stitch. You may wish sometimes to leave a space between the two fabrics while bridging them together. In this case, snap the raised seam guide accessory into the throat plate and guide the fabrics along each side. Anytime two pieces of fabric are joined decoratively with a space between them, it's called faggoting. And a number of the decorative stitches can be used for this technique. You may want to try A35 or D3. Let's do some shirring. When we stitch the same bridging stitch over elastic thread and then gather it up, we form a shirring. Use a woven light fabric and an elastic thread. Enter woven light on your sewing advisor, touch A27, and snap on presser foot C. That's that buttonhole foot that has lots of other uses because this time we're going to loop the elastic thread over that finger at the back of the foot and bring both ends forward under the foot just as we did in corded buttonholes. Now we sew on the wrong side of the fabric. And of course, we don't want to stitch through the elastic as we're sewing. And we won't stretch it as we're sewing either. We may need to guide it slightly and hold it a little taut so it's not caught in the stitching. But don't draw it up or hold it back as you're sewing. This technique speeds shirring on lingerie, children's wear, doll clothes, and has many craft applications. Once you remove your fabric from the machine, draw up the elastic thread to the amount of shirring. And this will have give to it. Shirring can also be accomplished using pearl cotton instead of the elastic thread. The finished shirring then is stable and not stretchy. Cute on children's wear. Well, speaking of children's wear, one of the most exciting and time-saving techniques on your new Viking Husqvarna is the pre-programmed computerized applique. The satin stitch is actually programmed in three different widths and you have a pre-programmed taper stitch for machine applique. For a tiny applique with a two millimeter width, such as on this little sweatshirt, you would touch stitch A14 to bring up an exact satin stitch. Now for a medium sized design, touch A15, that would bring up a four millimeter satin stitch, or A16 for the largest applique pieces. You'll have instant satin stitch perfectly set for your applique. To practice this technique, we'll use a heavy woven fabric with a piece of stitch and tear underneath to stabilize it. That's very important. Cut a heart from a scrap of medium woven, and now before sewing, enter woven heavy on your sewing advisor and touch A15. Use the B transparent foot. Then glue stick your heart to your denim. We've already done that. Wonder Under or Transfuse 2 are two great fusibles for applique. Ask your Viking dealer to demonstrate them to you. To apply the applique, we'll satin stitch around the heart with the outside swing of the zigzag jumping just off the edge of the applique. And when we reach the end, of course, we'd want to tie off. We do that easily with our stop function to secure stitches. Corners and curves take practice. And sometimes reducing your presser foot pressure helps with easy maneuverability. Two is what we suggest. A heart is really a good practice project because it gives you the inside and the outside corner to practice. And it also has some straight edges and some curves. 
applique has never been easier than it is on your Viking Husqvarna because everything is set automatically when you touch the applique stitch. The stitch itself is set, the length, the width, the sewing speed, and the tension. All thanks to the computer in your Viking to make your sewing so much faster and so much easier. And as you see, you can stitch a heart quickly and easily using your pre-programmed satin stitching. Great, Rhonda. We could put that on a little kid's garment, couldn't we? Be super. Well, there are times when you want to taper that satin stitch. An A17 will automatically taper it. I've used it actually for my little H on a hand towel. And we use tapers to get into corners and for points. And of course for satin stitch monograms of any size. We'll stitch a tapered diamond and a letter and use a woven medium on our sewing advisor and touch A17. Keep that B transparent foot on because it has a tunnel underneath. And when we begin sewing, our Viking will start automatically at a point, a taper point, and will stitch out to the six millimeter stitch width. Stitch for about a half inch, then touch reverse. The minute you touch reverse, your satin stitch will taper down and tie off automatically. If you desire a narrower width, simply set the width to the desired size. And you may want to narrow the width to three and sew a second diamond. To lengthen or shorten the taper, you would plus or minus the ELG or elongation button. You can stitch any size monogram you like using A17. Consult your handbook for monogram instructions. Well, one of our favorite applique techniques is heirloom applique. With heirloom applique stitching, you can actually imitate the look of applique done by hand. This is stitch A36. And it's also perfect for applying bindings and trims with a hand-stitched look. Select a woven medium and stabilize it with a piece of stitch and tear. Cut a diamond shape from a lightweight woven. Now enter woven medium on your sewing advisor and touch stitch A36. Use the B transparent foot. Next stitch around the outside of the diamond. As you stitch, the side stitch will jump onto the diamond and the straight stitch should lay just outside the edge of that diamond shape. Sometimes we do this with a clear monofilament type thread so that we don't see the stitching at all. Other times we match our stitching very closely and often we would use a contrast thread to give the effect. I'm sure you can see that this would allow you to sew on a binding and make it look like you actually had stitched that binding on with a hand done blanket stitch. I have another cute sample here that I'd like to share that has a little heart applique in place. And this one has the A30 stitch, or A36 stitch widened and stitched over the satin stitch around the edge of that heart. Well, Rhonda, did you get that little diamond all stitched in place? And I know you probably touched stop at the end when you wanted to tie off, right? Great. Okay. One of the other favorite techniques today is quilting. This is definitely a tremendously creative technique. I have several quilts. I just held up a little quilted heart to show you. But we have actually quilted our log cabin with machine stitching because your Viking Husqvarna has many beautiful and functional stitches for machine quilting. Now you can use transparent thread for invisible quilting or a matching or contrasting thread to highlight the quilting design. To practice this, we will use a woven medium fabric and a square of batting. We'll enter woven medium into the sewing advisor because that's our top fabric and we'll use our B foot. Presser foot pressure for quilting would be best at four. 
and usually we draw some quilting lines on the fabric. Place your fabric and batting under the foot, you have this sandwich, and begin sewing with your quilting stitch. You'll be quilting over the lines using A32 and possibly a second row using A33. These curved stitches are a good alternative to straight quilting in the ditch over piece seams. For some machine applications, the dual feet foot or the darning foot are used. These are explained on the accessory videotape. Next, let's try the favorite feather stitch. I have a sample of that and it simulates the crazy quilting, the kind you would do by hand, except that we'll of course do it on our Viking. Touch A35, the feather stitch, but bring the length to 4.5. Now we'll stitch the feather stitch on our sample. As you can see from how easily it's sewn, that this would certainly go a lot faster than if we had done this by hand, as they did in the pioneer days. Well, we will tie the other half of the fabric with a single stitch pattern. First, we'll insert our D cassette. This is D for decorative. And we're going to select the heart stitch, D24. Once we have selected D24, we're going to touch stop. And that means we have a single pattern repeat selected. Now stitch the hearts at even intervals to tie the quilt. You may want to elongate or to shorten the heart and to do this, you would plus or minus the elongation, ELG. Stitch tying can be especially fast and easy on a baby quilt, and the end result is really a darling quilted effect. Wouldn't that go fast? Great. Well, we're going to share some heirloom sewing with you next. And beautiful heirloom sewing is becoming so popular. And you can create beautiful heirloom garments using one of the many hem stitch patterns on your Viking Husqvarna. Now, hem stitching requires a special wing needle available from your Viking dealer. And you're going to use a woven specialty fabric such as organdy or linen. Generally, this will work best on a natural fiber fabric that is not too high a thread count. So you need to practice on samples first before you go to your garment. The other thing we always use for hem stitching is a matching very fine thread. And I'm going to show you some finished samples so you see what this is really supposed to look like and not exactly what we're doing because we have orange thread. As you can see, what we see are the holes and not necessarily the stitching. Let's try it together. Enter woven medium on your sewing advisor and touch stitch D4. Use the A foot because that applies the most pressure and that of course is the one that your info display is going to usually recommend. Sew a row of hem stitch inside the edge of your fabric. This way you create beautiful heirloom garments and crafts, combining the hem stitches with tucks and laces and insertions and decorative programs. Now one of the great things about the hem stitching is that you can do it in a matching color of thread, as I've done on this turquoise blouse. So that if you can't match a lace, well you're literally creating your own lace. Ask your dealer about heirloom sewing classes. And once you've sewn this beautiful hem stitch, you may want to trim right up to the edge. We cut right through the outer edge of holes, creating an edge border just as we've done on this blue blouse. Isn't that neat? Okay, our next technique actually is entredeau. And entredeau is the French word for in between. And we do that also with a wing needle. And you'll see it here on this little sample collar. And this is actually corded entredeau where we've applied lace and stitched it on 
with the entredo stitch D7. So touch D7 now and stitch on your piece of fabric the entredo stitch. Actually, many people have to buy this entredo by the yard because they don't have it on their sewing machine. But on your beautiful Viking, you can apply lace, join lace, actually decorate with beautiful entredo stitching quickly and easily. Can we take a look at that, Rhonda, and see what the entredo stitching looks like? Great. Now here you see it, of course, with the fine thread and the lace being applied with the entredo. So it's a totally different effect than what we're practicing with our colored threads. And to get the real effect of entredo, you'll want to take the time to, to thread up with some fine weight thread in a matching color. Heirloom sewing is great fun. This concludes the basic two portion of your sewing techniques in the handbook. Now we'll sew the basic three techniques, decorative stitches, programs, pictograms, and lettering. Your creativity is really unlimited with the many decorative options on cassette D and the programming possibilities within this cassette as well as when it's combined with other cassettes. Insert cassette D now and select a medium woven on your sewing advisor and sew on a medium woven fabric. Touch D16, the leaf. Consult the info display and use the B presser foot as recommended. Of course, use stitch and tear if you're working on a single thickness. Now stitch two leaf patterns along one edge of your fabric. As you begin to sew, sew one complete leaf and then while you're sewing the second leaf, touch stop. Your Viking will finish that second leaf and tie off. Anytime you touch stop while you're sewing, it will tie off that pattern and stop. Let's try just a single pattern. Begin sewing again. You will see that only one leaf will be sewn because the stop is still on. You would touch stop again to cancel it. So anytime you wish to sew just one pattern, simply touch stop before sewing. To begin at the start of a pattern, for example, the start of a leaf, simply touch the pattern, such as D16, to select it again, and it will begin at the beginning. Now let's talk about mirror image. There are two types of mirror image on your new Viking Husqvarna. Touch the mirror image on the left to mirror image the leaf pattern from side to side. The leaf pattern will mirror image on your program display. Do you see that the cursor is always at the left side of the presser foot pictured on the display? This will help you visually determine which way the pattern faces on your fabric as you sew. Sew a row of leaf patterns now. The leaf pattern will face the opposite direction side to side as before. This often eliminates the need to feed the bulk of a garment through the arm of the machine to sew decorative stitches, and it makes directional sewing of decorative stitches very easy. Directional sewing, of course, eliminates shifting and puckering sometimes of fabric. Now let's talk about end-to-end -end mirror image. This is also sometimes called flip-flop mirror image. Use the same piece of fabric touch A19 and stop and sew one pattern repeat. You see the direction that your pattern is facing, front to back. Now touch the end to end image and this will mirror image the pattern from front to back. You can see it happening on your program display. Your machine will tie off automatically after you've stitched because the stop is on. 
We use end-to-end -end mirror image to create beautiful symmet symmetrical patterns. And these are especially nice combined with lettering or as single directional or decorative motifs on blouse pockets, yokes, and other application where a small motif is desired. Let's talk about satin borders. Your Viking Husqvarna has many options for satin borders. On napkins, for example, I have a napkin right here where we've stitched a satin border right along the edge of that napkin. You can use them on collars, baby things, and more. Touch D26 now and sew a satin wave border along one edge of your previous sample fabric. When it's completed, you will then trim up closely to the stitching with a sharp scissors. You may want to stop the tape now and try some other satin borders such as D27 or D29 or 30. Most satin stitches have an added creative feature in that they can be elongated. Now when a stitch has the elongation capability, a number between 1 and 8 will appear in the program display under the stitch number. We would touch D30 now. The number 3 under the number D30 indicates the pre-programmed size of this diamond edge. To increase or decrease the size, you would plus or minus the elongation button on the selection panel. Sew a row of D30 stitches now and elongate the stitch as you sew. Elongation means that you can enlarge the stitch without increasing the length setting, which would change the dense satin appearance. This means that each one of your satin borders has many, many different options within itself. Great. That elongation feature is really fun. Well now let's try some programming. Some programming of decorative stitches. Because your Viking Husqvarna has nine permanent memories. The computer is actually built right into your Viking. And each memory will hold 63 stitches or letters for 567 possibilities. Follow these easy steps to design your own creative sewing programs. As you program, the cursor on the program display will indicate which stitch or letter is being programmed. Your program will always begin sewing at the stitch or letter above the cursor. To bring the program to the beginning, simply select the memory. So bring up a memory and you will find that you will have the cursor at the beginning point. We will use the sample fabric from the last technique. You've touched select function to bring up program and advance the memory to bring up an empty memory. You know an empty memory because no stitch appears on the program display. Now the truth is if you want to you can clear out a memory by simply touching clear. That will bring the cursor to the beginning and have you ready to program. When you advance to a memory that shows only the cursor on the program display, you're ready to program. Let's touch D11 together and enter it with the right cursor arrow. Did you see that move the cursor from under the picture of D11 over to the right, indicating the next space to program? Now touch D12 and again enter it with that right cursor arrow. Easy. Touch D13 and enter. Now to sew, we touch the select function button to bring up repeat. You see, this little program will not sew in the program mode. But don't worry if you forget because your Viking will just beep at you and the word program will blink indicating you must bring up repeat before sewing. Mistake proof.
Well, let's sew this little train now. To sew only one train, touch stop. Anytime in the repeat mode you touch stop, you will tie off after one stitch program. If stop is not touched, you will sew the program continuously. We'd have train after train after train. You can program any stitch combination using all the cassettes and any length or width you desire. Simply set the stitch as you want it, previewing it on your program display, and then enter it with that right cursor arrow. Now, say this train was facing the wrong way and we'd have to feed the bulk through the arm of our machine. Well, to mirror image an entire program, simply touch mirror image while you're in the repeat mode. Touch side to side mirror image now. And sew another train right next to the first. You have several programs with mirror image for practice. And anytime you want to mirror image a stitch within a program, as you program, you touch mirror image before entering. The stitch above the cursor will mirror image. You'll do a flower and leaf motif. So let's do that together, Rhonda, so we can help them. Select function to program. It's that easy. Advance to an empty memory or clear one. Touch D15 and enter it with that right cursor. Now touch D14 and enter. And then D15, mirror image, enter. Okay, bring up repeat. Touch stop so we only sew one and sew. Often when you stitch patterns, programs, or letters, you will want to remove the stitches between the designs so they stand alone. The stop you see will tie off at the end of the stitch or stitch program. We'll talk in a minute about tying off at the end of an individual stitch. Neat! I can show you a little sample here that actually shows how a simple pattern like the one we've just done would create a pretty design on a very plain blouse and turn it into a special garment. Now in this case I did tie off an individual stitch, my heart at each end. And to do that I simply entered D50, the fix, before and after that heart in a program. Let's sew the vine heart motif now, okay? Select the function to program. Advance to an empty memory or clear one. Touch D50 and enter it with the cursor. That's the fix. Touch D20, end to end mirror image and side to side mirror image and enter it with the cursor. And then touch D50 again and enter it with the cursor. D24, enter. D50, enter. D20, mirror image, side to side, enter. And then finally, D50, enter. Touch repeat, touch stop, and sew. Now this may sound a little complicated to you, but in a way we want to teach you all of the capability of your Viking. And you'll find in your handbook that it's explained step by step so that you can work your way through these programs. To mirror image this entire program, you would simply touch side to side mirror image while in repeat and sew it again. Cute! We got a little program very similar to what's on my blouse. Programming is really simple on the Viking. The computer is built right in. Well, what about cross-stitching? That's always been done by hand, but today you can create cross-stitch borders, monograms and motifs with the different size cross stitches found on cassette D. Select a medium weight woven now and fold, fold it in half and enter woven medium on your sewing advisor and touch D1, 2 or 3, your choice really, 
and then sew the cross stitch of your choice along one side of your fabric. We're cross stitching on a double thickness so we didn't need stitch and tear, but should you be making a, a table linen for example and working on a single thickness of fabric, be sure to use stitch and tear or a similar stabilizer underneath your fabric. What neat little cross stitches, all right. Next we will program a cross stitch border using two of the different cross stitch designs. Of course to program touch select function to the program, advance to an empty memory or clear one, now touch D1 and enter. Then touch D2 and enter. Now touch D1 but before you enter it touch side to side mirror image. Now enter. Isn't it great to preview that border right on your program display and see if it's right before you sew it? Touch repeat now and sew your cross stitch program. This is the way you can create table linens, children's garments, and craft items quickly and beautifully with the cross stitch possibilities. Really your only limit is your imagination. So many possibilities. Okay. Are you ready to do some lettering? Well, block and script letters and numbers are programmed in the same way. For monograms, gift items, quilts, labeling, and other endless possibilities. In fact, I have a little sample to share. It's my family tree. Wouldn't this be a fun gift for those grandmas at Christmas time? We will select a woven medium fabric and stabilize it with stitch and tear. Enter woven medium on your sewing advisor and insert cassette B for block. Consult the info display. The B foot is recommended. Select the function to program. Advance to an empty memory and now enter the word Husqvarna. So we touch an H and enter it, touch U and enter, touch S and enter, Q and enter, V, enter, A, enter, R, enter, N, enter, A, enter. Touch repeat. Now touch stop and stitch the word Husqvarna on your sample. Once you've sewn the word Husqvarna, you might want to program your name and today's date and stitch that. Isn't this easy? You can program a number of letter sizes by using the width before entering the letter. You may want to enter the first letter of a name at the six width and other letters narrower. Regardless of what the width, isn't it wonderful that you can preview those words on that program display before you sew them? Now, because your Viking Husqvarna has that exclusive program display, you can of course see an error before you sew it. So there's no need for tedious ripping ever. You can clear any single stitch for correction, but the first one, when the cursor is under the first stitch and you clear, the entire program will be cleared. Let's program the name John, but let's program it wrong and then correct it. So touch select function to program and advance to an empty memory or clear one. Then touch J and enter, O and enter. And let's touch I next, okay, and enter it and then N and enter it. Now preview it before you sew it. Whoops, <laughs> we entered an I instead of an H. Well, to correct that letter, simply use that left cursor arrow to bring the cursor under the I, which is the incorrect letter, and now touch H and enter. You've corrected it. Wasn't that easy?
Now say you need to remove a letter from a program. Use the arrow to bring the cursor to the incorrect letter and touch fix. Let's, um, well, let's remove the H from this and make it John, J-O-N. So bring that cursor under the H, touch fix and enter, and look what happens. We've solved it. Well, to insert a missing letter into a program, we would bring the letter to the following letter that's missing. Now, we'll try this together, okay? We want to uh, fix this John, but let's spell out Johnny before we do anything else, okay? So let's take and spell J O H N N Y. Now, what if we want to remove a letter from this? We're, or, we're missing the H, right? We want to add an H, is that the problem? Okay. So we would then bring the cursor to the first N Okay, touch clear. Now that takes off the rest of Johnny. Touch H, enter it. Now touch clear again to bring up that program and enter. Did we fix it, Rhonda? We did. Okay, and you can do it just as easily. It's very easy to make corrections when you can always preview before you sew on your program display. Program the script letters on the C cassette for professional monograms on shirt cuffs, pockets, and collars. Insert your C cassette now. We'll use the sample fabric from the last technique. Now touch select function to program. And advance to an empty memory or clear one. Touch the letters in your initials, entering each with the cursor arrow. Once it appears on the program display, Touch repeat and stop, and now sew your monogram. You can actually program decorative stitches in combinations with your monogram. Several specially suitable stitches are on cassette C. You may of course combine your monogram in program with stitches from any of the cassettes. You may want to stop the tape and stitch the program using multiple cassette technique from your handbook now. We'll talk about pictograms next, and I have a few samples to share with you. Pictograms are basically stitchery pictures that are exclusive to the Viking Husqvarna sewing machines. And with the pictogram feature, you can create computerized machine embroidery fast and easy, and you retain it in memory for an exact repeat of any design later. Pictograms are created by combining the satin elements found on cassette D into a program. Your Viking Husqvarna has more satin elements than ever before. And the program display lets you become the designer to program unlimited pictograms. We will stitch several simple shapes and sew a flower to acquaint you with this. Soon you will see how easy pictogramming really is. To stitch the flower, insert cassette D now. Choose a medium weight woven fabric and stabilize it with stitch and tear. Enter woven medium on your sewing advisor and use the B transparent foot to see the best when you're pictogramming. Now select function to program. Advance to an empty memory and touch D32 and enter. Touch D32 again and end to end mirror image, then enter. Touch repeat, touch stop, and now sew the petal. You'll see one petal appear on the program display. Begin at the center of the flower and sew a petal, then sew four more petals from the center out. You see with pictogram sewing, all your petals are perfect. And isn't it wonderful that as we create the pictograms, 
with the satin element shapes on cassette D, we actually preview them on our program display so that we can see what we're creating as we create it. And Rhonda's starting in the center of that flower and sewing those petals out. Most flowers would have an uneven number of petals, I think. Isn't that true? And so we're going to create this flower. With pictograms, all your petals are perfect. Now, let's add a stem by touching D39 and bringing the width narrower to 2.5. Stitch a stem from the center of your flower, well, as long as you desire. Touch stop to end. Okay, now let's add a center to the flower. Touch select function to program and touch clear to clear out the petal. We won't need that anymore. Touch D35, enter, and D35 end to end mirror image to form a ball and enter. Touch repeat. Touch stop. Now stitch that ball in the center of your flower. Isn't it great to preview your pictogram on the program display? All right. I think that flower needs some leaves. What do you think? So for leaves, we'll touch select function one more time to program and touch clear to clear out that ball. And now touch D35, enter, and touch D32, end to end mirror image, enter, to see a leaf on your program display. Touch repeat, touch stop, and now sew a leaf from the stem out. As you're sewing, of course, it's going to stop at the end of that leaf. Tap the foot control to drop the needle into the fabric, pivot around, and touch seam on the sewing advisor to straight stitch down the center of the leaf. This is a good way to connect those stitches together and not have to stop. All right, once you're down at the bottom of the leaf, stitch a second leaf by bringing up that program again. Touch select function twice to the repeat mode. Touch stop so that it will stop at the end of that leaf. And then when you get to the end, tap that foot control into the fabric, pivot around, touch seam, and stitch back down to the bottom of the stem. At the bottom of the stem, of course, we touch stop to tie off. Isn't pictogramming fun? Hopefully you have a little bit of the concept of combining those satin elements.